I just want to say I'm going to give you the space that you want. Um, I just hope we can still talk and just be friends. He said what he said. Mike tries to break up with Jimena after learning she's literally disgusted by him. Look, she's not even like, you know, just happy to be near you, I don't think. Plus... Mahogany, am I your boyfriend or just your friend? Mahogany brings Ben back down to reality by telling him he's not her man. But even still, he sets up this getaway for them that I'm not going to lie, had me uncomfortable as a viewer. This is beautiful. It is. What do you want to eat? Whatever they got, it's good. We'll get into that, and you'll also get a first look at my exclusive interview with Ben, where I got answers to a lot of our big questions including this one. OC wants to know, would you be comfortable with your 22-year-old daughter dating a 50-year-old man? That's probably the number one question I've gotten on my social media, uh, and, and, and they feel like that's the ringer. Let's talk about it. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. Before we get into the musty moments from this episode, I have to show you this awkward but sweet moment from Gino and Jasmine. Jasmine is teaching Gino how to dance, and he has absolutely no rhythm, but she likes it. Like killing ants. Kill the ants, baby. Okay, wait, wait. Loose, loose your body. Just feel the. Trying to. Baby, you're dancing like you have a stick on your ass. <laughs> Just move. Gino is the worst dancer ever. You're so terrible, <laughs> and I like it. I feel like they have turned into that wild and quirky aunt and uncle who you know have their issues, <laughs> but when they're in a good place, they can be a good time. I'm turning around you like a stick. <laughs> I had to show you that. All right, let's get into Mike and Jimena. Quick refresh. Last week, Jimena told Mike to go sleep in the other room because she's creeped out by the way he stares at her while she sleeps. On top of that punch to the gut for Mike, she also told him that she does not love him. Do you love me? No. Surprisingly, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, Jimena's blatant honesty comes after Mike refuses to pay for her plastic surgery. Si te quiero, pero no te amo. And fast forward to this week, Jimena pulls out the I love you, but I'm not in love with you card as she continues to play games with Mike. Playing games, playing games. Amar es una palabra muy grande. Jimena explains that she can't say she's in love with Mike because they haven't lived together for a long time. And love is, quote, a very big word. But so is saying yes when someone proposes. And she did that. At this point, Mike is confused. But he does speak up and call Jimena out on her. <laughs> but you always told me that you love me and I'm your life. Amar a una persona necesita mucho tiempo de convivencia. Girl, we all know what Jimena is doing here. It's clear as day that she does not want Mike around. But she is not ready to let go of his benefits. disappointing that she's willing to manipulate Mike and continue to lead him on for her own comfort, as if he doesn't deserve true happiness. A couple months ago, Jimena was so excited to marry me. So when Jimena tells me she doesn't love me and love is too big of a word for the relationship, that makes me feel devastated and even more confused. Mike attempts to talk about their issues some more, but Jimena tells him, She's ready to go to bed. No, she didn't. Yep. So he makes his way to the other room. And here is what she has to say. Hace unos meses me sentí súper enamorada de Mai. Tío, yo estaba súper feliz, pero no sé qué pasó ahora. Entonces, lo quiero. Sí, le tengo un aprecio, pero no me siento bien con él. Jimena then says there are things about Mike that make her uncomfortable and annoy her and all she's doing is being honest with him. She also admits that she doesn't want to hurt Mike. Meanwhile, he literally has his head in a pillow right now. Done done. Yes, done done. This is 
my thing. If you know you don't want to be with him, which she knows, he's going to feel the pain at some point. So why drag it out? I mean, we know why she's doing it, but still. Not really. Mike sleeps it off. But thankfully, the next day he calls his friend John in the US, who tells him what most of us wish we could tell him in this moment. My man, I'd be out of there. You just spent countless amount of time and energy and money to make it happen during a pandemic. Who's benefiting from everything that you were doing? Her. Her, yes! Mike responds by saying that he's starting to see more and more that the relationship is one-sided. And while Jimena keeps telling him he needs to change, she needs to remember she is not perfect either. These are things that Mike, that you, makes you, they're not changeable things. Her true colors are starting to come out. And usually that happens after a couple months when you're with somebody. Mike, blinded by love, tells his friend John he's still hopeful things can work out with Jimena. The only light at the end of the tunnel that you need to see is the door for the plane back to New York. Facts! Now here is where things get really interesting. After their conversation, Mike sets up a video call with his friend Nelsie, who is fluent in Spanish, with hopes that she can help he and Jimena come to a better understanding of what's going on in their relationship. And they came to a better understanding, all right. Nelsie asks Jimena what she likes about Mike, and instead of naming those things, she started to list what she doesn't like about Mike. She even called him degenerate. Right. Obviously, the situation is making Jimena miserable too. Now, Nelsie's next question lands her on the wall of 90 day MVPs. We can go ahead and put Mike's friend John up there too. Yes, this wall is dedicated to the voices of reason that are so needed in this 90 day world. They don't come around often, so we have to show love when they do. All right, back to Nelsie's question. That's the one. No, eso, o sea, eso, gracias, porque, o sea, no trabajé, mis hijos lo tuvieron todo, pero yo puedo trabajar, normal, como hacía antes. Entonces, tú trabajabas y después cuando conocí, conociste a él, dejaste de trabajar. Sí. Mike, so you didn't tell me that before. What happened? When you guys met, she stopped working, and then you've been basically supporting her and her her kids and her and paying her rent and all everything. Is that what you've been doing? Yes. Nelsie ends the conversation by telling Mike that she hopes he stops paying for Jimena's stuff. She's literally disgusted by you, and I don't think she's happy with you, and I don't think that she has love for you. I just want to ask Jimena if Mike's financial assistance is worth all this stress. Personally, I would rather work and have peace of mind than deal with somebody I don't want to be around because they support me financially. Granted, it's not that black and white for everybody. Some people feel as if they have to do what they have to do. But at least respect the person that's giving you a hand. The reality is she needs Mike. Mike doesn't need her. I just want to say, I'm going to give you the space that you want. Um, I just hope we can still talk and just be friends. To be real, Jimena's words give me flashbacks to the no good men I have left in my past. What do you mean are you ending things with me? Once again, I said what I said. Now Mike has to muster up the strength to say, yes, I'm ending it with you. 
And based off the tease for next week, I don't know if he has it in him. She said I could stay and see if we could come up with a solution. It's because she wants you to pay for stuff. She doesn't deserve you being around and you don't deserve to be treated like that. Leave tomorrow. All right. What do you think? Is Mike going to leave? Does he have the strength? This is his first serious girlfriend. Probably not, but we'll see. Mike, surprise me, please. I'm looking at some texts, just reminding myself that it was real. Like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to Ben and Mahogany. The day after she lied about where she lives and Ben found out she's truly 22 and not 24. It's just something that kind of caught me off guard. He decides not to confront her about her lies. Instead, he feels as if they need more time to bond. So he meets up with her and two of her friends who clearly feel uncomfortable having this 52 year old man around. Her one friend says she never would have imagined Mahogany going out with someone almost as old as their parents. Ooh, at their age, early 20s, some friends will surprise you. You think you know somebody and then they just come out the woodworks with something and have you wondering, who are you really? <laughs> but then again, it is early 20s. Most of us had no clue who we were. All right, back to Ben. Can you tell me something about Mahogany that you love about her? He starts asking Mahogany's friends questions about her. That was a lot. Well, I do know. If a person is very responsible, and this is the person that you can always trust and count on. Aww. That's <laughs> beautiful. Wait, did anyone catch Mahogany's reaction? She speaks Spanish, so I'm not sure why she's acting as if the translator just helped her understand what her friend said. Trust and count on. Aww. That's <laughs> beautiful. Maybe she's nervous. Hmm. Anyway, Ben goes on to ask this. Can you tell me something that you want me to know as her new boyfriend? Well, honestly, I didn't think you were her boyfriend, but she did tell us she had a friend from abroad coming to visit her. Ooh, the silence. Ben goes on to ask Mahogany if he is her boyfriend. And she responds by saying, I never told you that. I think, Brad, you never Brent? told me, oh, Mahogany, do you want to be my girlfriend? This leads Ben to face the fact that he just assumed. Here we had been planning a family together, planning on getting married, having very intimate conversations. I traveled 4,000 miles to be with her, and all of a sudden, I'm not even her boyfriend. I am so shocked. I just don't quite understand where she's coming from. I'm just really confused by the whole thing. Ben needs to be smarter in this dating game. It is 2022. It can be ruthless out here. He's a bit too naive, which is something I asked him about during our chat. We learned about your childhood experience. You grew up in a very strict religious home. Do you think that that, had, that has anything to do with um, you being naive when it comes to dating and being so, I guess, optimistic about people and overlooking red flags. Do you think that has anything to do with it? There probably is. Um, I have been in therapy for a year and a half. I, I went through a dating um, time in my life that I just was not happy with. It was just not good. My first marriage just was so disastrous that I felt like, you know, am I just trying to start all over, you know, and, and dating someone so young, you know, is me trying to, you know, just capture those years back. Ben goes on to say that he doesn't think that's the case with Mahogany, but it's definitely something he's thought about. Let's quickly touch on this getaway, which starts off with an awkward car ride. When they get to the hotel, they go into their separate rooms. So tomorrow, sand dunes? Yes, perfect. Right. Okay, sounds good. 
And the next day, they set out to have some fun in the desert, which includes a dinner where Ben gets a little touchy-filly. This is beautiful. It is. What do you want to eat? Whatever they got is good. While their relationship makes many of us uncomfortable, specifically with their age difference, Ben being 52 and Mahogany being 22, the truth of the matter is that she's legal. I know that doesn't take the uneasiness out of it, but it is what it is. All right, here is Ben's answer to the big question everyone wants to know. OC wants to know, would you be comfortable with your 22 year old daughter dating a 50 year old man? Right, and you know, that's probably the number one question I've gotten on my social media. Uh, and, and and they feel like that's the ringer. Like, oh man, if he can it answer that. It kind of is that, though. I saw it, I said, oh, see, that's a good question. We're good. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no one that loves mahogany more in this world than her dad. Yeah. I would hope that the gentleman, the 50 year old, would have the same exact rules that I have. And that is, he has to go through me. Hmm. And I interview him and I look at him and I look at his health. I look at his viability. I look at his context. I look at his background. I look at his intentions. And, you know, would there be a chance that I'd ever let them date? I don't know. It would really have to depend on the individual. Mm, he said a lot more, but of course I can't include it all here, but it is a must watch. Check out etonline.com and our YouTube channel for the full interview. All right, next week we are getting back into Kim and Usman. It looks like things are continuing to go south in their relationship after Usman told Kim the truth about Zara. Why would you bring me down here to shoot a video about another woman? This is funny. Oh, is it funny? Very funny. Is that funny too? Kim said you are not about to play me on TV. Ooh, all right, 90 Day Fans fam. Make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.